is. And that's about <gasps> right. Love it. Oh, hi, it's me, Daisy Bees. I was so focused on my project that I didn't even see you there. But I'm so happy you're here today because I am solving a mystery. Do you want to help? Yes! Great, because I am going to need all of the help I can get. You know why? There's a problem with the moon! Oh no! I made these cutouts to show you what I mean. Come take a look. So the moon used to be big and beautiful and shining bright, like this. Oh. And then, just a few weeks later, the moon started to disappear, and I could only see half of it, like this. Oh no! And then last night, you're not going to believe it, there was only a tiny sliver left, like this. Pretty soon, all of the moon is going to disappear. Oh no! Ah! I just realized something. Someone told me once that the moon is made of cheese. Yum. It definitely looks like cheese. Something must be eating the moon. That's it. Yummy moon. But what would eat the moon in space? something they found even more delicious than cheese. Hmm. What is an alien's favorite food? A question! You know what this calls for. The Curiosity Corner. What is an alien's favorite type of food? Do you want to find out what an alien's favorite food is too? Yes? Great. Then I need your help. I need you to use your imagination and say the magical transportation bell. Ready? Okay. Off we go. We're on. Nothing for them to eat. Oh no! Please don't eat me. Please don't eat me. Please don't eat me. Daisy, open your eyes. Huh? Dr. Alyssa. Hi, Daisy. Are you all right? Oh no. I've got a very big problem. Actually, we all have a very big problem. The whole planet has a very big problem. Wow, Daisy, you seem pretty upset. What's wrong? Well, I've been watching the moon and I noticed that it used to be really big, like this. And then it got smaller, like this. And then it got even smaller last night, like this. I see. And there's only one explanation. The moon is made of cheese, and aliens love cheese, yum, yum, and hungry yum, aliens yum, are eating yum, the moon! Yum, yum. Well, and I know how to fix this. We need to offer them something even more delicious than cheese. And the Curiosity Corner sent me to you. So, Dr. Alyssa, you must know about aliens and their eating habits. Well, I actually don't know that much about aliens or what they like to eat. Oh, no! But. I do know a lot about the moon. Well, that's good. Yep, because I'm an astrophysicist, so I study space and all of the objects floating around in space, like the moon. And like me a minute ago. And like the planets, the sun, and the earth. And aliens! Hello! Well, we actually haven't found any of those. Uh -oh. Yet, at least. So then, who is eating the moon? Wasn't me. Nobody is, Daisy. 
I think I need to talk to you a little bit about the sun, the moon, and the earth. Okay, great. The sun, the earth, and the moon are like big balls floating in space. Do you know which one is the biggest? Um, I think the sun is the biggest. Yep, the sun is huge. It's actually about a hundred times bigger than the earth, and it's 400 times bigger than the moon. So the moon is the smallest. Oh, cutie little moon. Yep, the sun is a huge fiery ball of gas, and the earth is a ball of rock and water, and all the other things that are living on it. So wait, we're living on a giant rock floating through space? Yep, Whee! and actually, it's spinning. <gasps> oh, I love spinning. Wow, that's a lot of spinning, Daisy. The Earth actually only makes one complete spin every day. And we don't even feel it moving. <gasps> that's good. Otherwise, we'd all be dizzy all the time. So, let's pretend this flashlight is the sun. The sun stays in one place. As the Earth rotates, if you are on this side of the Earth that's facing the sun, it's going to look like daytime outside. But then, as it keeps on spinning, you move to the other side of the Earth, facing away from the sun. So when that happens, it looks like nighttime outside. Wow! So when you're on this side of the Earth, it's daytime. And when you spin on the Earth's axis, mm -hmm. it becomes nighttime because the sun's light can't reach you. <gasps> wow, that is magical. Exactly. Meanwhile, the moon is circling around the Earth. This is called orbiting. Oh, like this. I'll be the moon, you're Earth. Go! But Daisy, the moon is actually a lot slower than you are. It takes about 27 days for the moon to make one complete circle or orbit around the Earth. Whoa. And the moon is not made of cheese, Daisy. Oh, that's a relief. The moon is actually a big rock. A big, bright, shining rock. Well, the moon itself is actually not shining at all. But when I look up at it in the sky, it's shining very brightly. It appears that way, but what we're actually seeing is light from the sun shining onto the moon, making it look bright. And this is the key to your big problem about why the moon appears to be shrinking. It is? How? Well, it takes the moon about 27 days to make one orbit around the Earth. Or about a month. A month? More like a month! Yes, well, let me show you. As you can see, when the moon is on this side of the Earth, we're looking directly at the half that's completely lit up. This is called a full moon. Ooh, I think I love full moons. After a full moon, the moon continues moving along in its orbit. As it moves, the moon appears to get smaller and smaller from the Earth. That's exactly what you were seeing, Daisy. And it keeps going until you can't see the lit up side of the moon at all. That's what we call a new moon. And then, as the moon continues to orbit, we see more and more of the moon again from Earth. Wow, that was amazing! Let me show you this so that we can all understand a little bit better. This is the sun, the earth, and the moon. As I move this, you can see how the earth moves around the sun while the moon moves around the earth. And it takes a full year for the earth to make one complete spin around the sun. So the whole moon is always there. Yes, the whole moon is always there. It's just that we can't always see all of it. Wow, the moon is magical. It is. And last night, just like you saw a little sliver of the moon, there's nothing to worry about because as the moon continues to move in its orbit, it's going to get bigger again. 
And this is what we call the phases of the moon. So the moon isn't being eaten by aliens. Definitely not. Mystery suit! I feel much better now. I can tell. You were super worried before, but that's because you were only seeing a part of what was going on. Right. I saw the moon get smaller and I made up this big scary story about aliens eating the moon. And then I got really upset about the story I was telling myself. Thank you, Dr. Alyssa, for helping me see the whole story of the moon and not just the part I was making up in my head. You're welcome, Daisy. Please come back anytime you have questions about space. Thanks, I will. Bye-bye. Oh, wow. I'm so happy Dr. Alyssa helped us solve the mystery of the disappearing moon. We learned that the moon isn't disappearing at all. It's always there and there's nothing to be scared about. <laughs> I think what happened is I saw the moon disappearing in the sky and then I felt nervous in my body and my brain made up this whole scary story about aliens eating the moon. When in fact, that wasn't true at all. The moon is always there and it's even more amazing than I ever could have imagined. I think next time, when I feel nervous feelings in my body, I'll just say, huh, I feel nervous. I feel tingling in my tummy. But then I'll say, that's okay. I'm not going to tell myself an upsetting story to make it worse. I'm just gonna feel my feelings and let them flow through me. Because maybe what I'm about to encounter is even better than what I could have imagined. Do you ever make up stories like that when you feel a big emotion? Like maybe on the first day of school, you might feel a little nervous and your brain might start telling you all these scary stories about how the day is going to be. But those stories might not be true. So instead, feel your feelings and then get curious because maybe the first day of school will be better than you ever even imagined. Maybe it will be magical. Just remember, magic is everywhere and it's up to you to find it. So go enjoy your day, find some magic, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Daisy Bees.